In this Blender tutorial, I will show you how to create this procedural rough metal material in Blender. This procedural material is available for purchase on my Gumroad store, and you can also get access to my procedural materials if you join my Patreon page. And this procedural material was originally created for my sci-fi security drone Blender tutorial series, so if you'd like to check out that tutorial series, links in the description. And if you'd like to purchase more of my procedural materials, then you can check out my Blender procedural material packs and that's a great way to help support this channel. And if you'd like to learn how to create any of my procedural materials then you can also check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube with the link in the description. So let me just show you what I have set up in the 3D space. So I pressed shift A and I went here to mesh and I added an icosphere just because I like previewing procedural materials on spheres. And then right behind me if you click on that little arrow there to open up the add icosphere settings right after you add the icosphere sphere I just turn the subdivisions up to like a six so that it is very subdivided and smooth and then using the object context menu I just shaded this object smooth and then I also added a camera and pointed the camera at the icosphere now for the lighting I am using this studio small 02 1k HDRI and this is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com so the links in the description if you'd like to download it so if you go here to the world properties and click on the yellow dot you can choose environment texture and then you can just click on open and open up the HDRI and this will give us some nice lighting and reflections to preview the material and then if you want to make the background transparent you can go over here to the render properties and under the film tab you can click on the transparent button and then if I hold down the Z button to go into the rendered view you can see the background is transparent so the HDRI is still lighting up the scene but the background is transparent and then also to make the colors a bit nicer if you open up the color management I'm using the view transform of filmic and the look here to high contrast and this will make the colors more contrasty and saturated. So I'm in the shading tab right here so I have the 3D space here and I am in the rendered view and then also right over here I have the shader editor. And then I will also be using the node wrangler add-on in this video so if you don't have the node wrangler enabled you can click on edit and you can go to the preferences and then over there in the add-ons tab you can just search for node wrangler and just check mark the node wrangler add-on and I'll show you how to use it in the video. So you can just select the object that you want to add the material onto and let's click on the new button and I can rename this material procedural rough metal so to start off I'm gonna press shift a let's go here to the search and I'm gonna search for the Musgrave texture and let's drop this down here and then we turned on the node wrangler add-on so you can hold down the control and shift key and then select different nodes and the wire here from the material output is going to go into the node and this will allow you to preview different nodes on our objects and then with this texture selected I can press control T that's using another feature of the node wrangler add-on it's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping but then I don't need the mapping node because the mapping node is just used to transform the texture so I can select it and press X to delete it on the texture coordinate I want to use the object so let's put the object into the vector of the Musgrave and the object coordinates is going to place the texture on the object more evenly so now let's change some of the settings of the Musgrave texture so I'm gonna turn the scale to 1 but then I want this to be very detailed to look like rough metal so let's turn the detail all the way to the max which is 15 so now it definitely looks more rough in there but it's still not that rough it still is a little bit blobby so let's turn the dimension all the way to zero and when we turn the dimension to zero now you can see that it looks super rough and kind of grainy now I also want to mix this Musgrave texture with a noise texture. So let's press Shift A. I'm going to go here to the search and I'm going to search for the noise texture and let's put that above the Musgrave. And then I can Control Shift and select the noise texture to preview it. And let's put the object into the vector as well on the noise texture. Now on the scale here, I'm just going to turn that to four and then I want this noise texture to be very detailed. So let's turn the detail all the way to the max of 15. And then I do want to add some more roughness. So let's turn the roughness value to like a 0.7. Now this noise texture is pretty gray, it's not very contrasty, so to make it more contrasty I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to go here to the search and I'm going to search for a color ramp and we're going to stick the color ramp right here after the noise texture. And then I can take the black tab and I can drag it out and you can see as I do that it's going to make the noise texture darker and more contrasty. 
So I now want to join these two textures together to make a very detailed rough metal texture. So to do this, you can select the color ramp and then hold down the shift key and select the Musgrave texture. So I can now press control zero and control zero is using the feature of the Node Wrangler add-on and it's going to add this mix RGB. So I need to drag this back and drag the principle down here. So you can see by pressing control zero with these two nodes selected, it added this mix RGB. And so we can use this to mix multiple colors together. So this color ramp can go into color one, and then the Musgrave can go into color two. Now, if I drag the factor, that's gonna blend between only using the noise texture or only using the Musgrave texture. But I want to instead just add the dark values together. So I'm gonna click on the mix here, and I can change this to darken. So now if I turn the factor to zero, it's just using the noise texture, but then as I turn up the factor, it's gonna add the dark values from the Musgrave because we set this to darken. So now we have a very cool detail rough metal texture. So now what I want to do is put this into the principled shader. So I'm first going to pull out a wire from the color and I'm going to put this into the base color of the principled shader. And then I can control shift and select the principled shader to preview it. Now you can see it's very dark in some areas and that doesn't look very nice. So I'm going to add a color ramp in here to change the colors. So we can actually just click on this color ramp and I can press shift D to duplicate it. And I'm going to drop it right in here before the base color. And then I'm going to hit the backspace and the backspace is going to reset the color ramp. Now I want this metal to be a bit more gray, so I'm gonna click on this black tab right here, and I'm gonna turn this up so it's actually a pretty light gray color. And if you'd like to use the exact same gray color that I'm using, then you can go to the hex value and you can punch in a hex value of nine, six times. And then this white tab right here, I'm just gonna leave this set to fully white. Now this doesn't really look like metal, and that's because the metallic value is turned to zero. So let's turn the metallic value all the way to one, and that way all of the material is gonna be completely metallic. Now I want to have more control over the roughness because right now the roughness is being controlled by this value, but the entire material has the same amount of roughness. But I instead want some parts to be more rough and other parts to be more shiny. So let's take the color here from the darken and we're going to put this into the roughness. Now I want to control this better because right now some parts are very shiny, almost like a mirror, but then other parts are super rough. So I want to change the colors and that'll change how shiny and rough it is. So I'm going to click on this color ramp and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it and let's put it right here before the roughness and then just select the color ramp and I'm going to hit the backspace to reset it. And then I actually want to click on this drop down arrow and I'm going to click on flip color ramp. So now the white is over here and the black is over here. Now I'm going to click on this black tab and I just want to make this kind of like a dark gray. And then I'm going to click on this white tab here and I'm going to make this a bit darker. So if the colors are darker, that's going to make the metal more shiny. But if the colors are lighter, then they're going to be more rough. So I'm just going to make this a bit darker to kind of like a light gray. And if you want to use the same values that I'm using, you can click on this dark dark gray tab, you can go to the hex and I'm gonna be using a hex value of 5C, 5C, 5C. And then right over here on the lighter color, if you click on the color and go to the hex value, I'm gonna be using a hex value of A6, A6, A6. So that metal is looking very cool, but it's very smooth and I do wanna make it a bit rough. So let's take the color here from the darken and I'm going to put that into the normal of the principal shader to give it some bump. Now when we do that, you can see there's some weird shading issues and this is because this is color data, but then this is normal data. So we need a node in here to convert the color data into normal data. So to do this, I'm gonna press shift A and let's go here to the search and I'm gonna search for a bump node and we wanna put the bump node in between the darken and the normal. So just stick it right there. And then to actually convert this to a normal data, we want the color here to be going into the height value. So now if you zoom into the metal, you can see it's very bumpy and very rough. Now that is way too strong, so on the strength value right here on the bump, I'm just going to change this to like a 0.1 so it's much less bumpy. And there we go, so there is the procedural rough metal material. So I'll just give this a final render now. So thank you for watching this video, and I hope you found the tutorial helpful. And if you'd like to purchase this procedural material and help support the channel, then you can do that over on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page, the links are in the description. And if you'd like to purchase more of my materials, then you can check out my Blender procedural material packs. And if you'd like to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, then you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. And as I mentioned earlier, this procedural material was originally 
specifically created for my sci-fi security drone blender tutorial series so if you'd like to check out that tutorial series link is in the description but i hope you found this video helpful and thank you for watching